This is Amy Chan from CakeDecoratingSchool.com, and if you like cake decorating, you're in the right place. Thanks for checking out one of our past live sessions. If you had fun and enjoyed it, we'll hope you tune in for one of our future lives. And remember, if you're one of our paid members, you can watch these and all the rest of them anytime on your platform. This is what we are going to be doing. Uh, in just a second, Tom is probably going to turn the chat log off just so it's easier to see the full screen for everyone. So if you have questions, hold them till the end and we will make sure that we get to all of them. So the first thing I'm gonna go over is just flat icing the cupcake. Then we'll talk about the tips that we're using for everything and we'll go over making some little flowers on the nail and also piping some directly on your cupcakes. So let's go ahead and get started. I have some light green buttercream that is nice and soft, right? and I've got my nice offset spatula ready to go. If you haven't done this before, it's a really nice way to ice a cupcake. It gives you a nice finish. It only takes a few seconds to do each one, right? A nice big heaping kind of tablespoon or two of buttercream will do it and it should be extra. And I'm just using my spatula. You can see just gently, right? Kind of nice little angle one way and then I go back angle the other direction. So I'm just using the edge of the spatula just to gently push the frosting out past the edges of the cupcake. And that way, if your cupcakes are domed at all, this will give you a flat surface, right? It'll fill in the gap on the edges. And once you're out past the edge, you can use that spatula and just run it at a slight angle all the way around, right? And that'll level it off finish it off nicely on the edges with the paper. And it gives you a nice flat surface to pipe on on top. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do one more really quickly. And then we'll have a couple of these ready to go for our plum blossoms. Start nice big heaping amount of buttercream. A lot of times I end up taking some off, right? So it's always easier to start with excess and remove a little than it is to start with less and keep adding more, right? and just a quick pass around the outside edges and we have a nice flat surface to decorate on. So I have a couple of bags ready to go. And I just wanted to list out my tips for everyone and I'll hold this a little closer so everyone can see. I'm going to use a 59 petal tip with light pink, right? And it has, if everyone can see, a curved opening. And this is one of those ones where it's actually handed and a lot of times in sets they'll sell both directions but sometimes they only sell one i'm right-handed so i can use usually the ones that come in every tip if you're a lefty sometimes unfortunately it's a little harder to find the ones that go in the reverse but i think they are more common now than they used to be and i think for the wilton sets it's actually a 59s so it curves the opposite direction um, i'm using a 101 okay and it's got a little bit of kind of like an orangey red color in it. So that one is just a really small petal tip, right? So classic opening, nice and straight. I'm also using, whoop, where is it? A number five, right? With my brown. So this is what I'm using for my tree branches. And then I've got a two with a little bit of darker green in it, just for some cute little leaves and a little springy green. And I've got this kind of in-between kind of corally orange color that I'm gonna use for stamens and I have a number one on that. So it's just a nice plain round tip, right? So now that we've talked about what we're using and our colors, we'll talk about this 59 tip, right? Just because if you haven't had a lot of experience on flower nails, it can be a little tricky, right? So this one's got a little curved opening, right? You can see it right there, right? And it's kind of handed, but generally what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold it so that that opening is um, oriented so that that little tip, right, that curves up is pointing to the left side, kind of about nine o'clock, right? And we're gonna have the fat end so that it's touching the center. And then when I'm drawing a petal, I'm gonna pull the center up towards the outside edge of the nail, spin my nail a little bit, and then pull it back. And then that takes that skinny end all the way around the outside, right, and forms your petal, right? And as it's laying on the nail, right, the tip, it's oriented so that that little 
right kind of curved up lip of the opening is just a little off the surface. So the fat end should actually be touching it. The tip should be almost laying against the surface, right? And a lot of times when I do it, I put it all the way down and then just rock it up a tiny bit and that will cup the petals for you, right? So, and then we're just using that back and forth motion on the tip where we're pulling it out, spinning the nail as we pause and then pulling it back. And that's probably a lot of silliness and nonsense talking about it without actually doing it, which is what we're gonna do next, right? So just for the first time, right? So I've got my bag, right? That end of that little petal tip is gonna touch the center, right? And you can see I'm holding it kind of, so the bag is back going away from me, right? The tip is lined up, right? Pointing towards nine o'clock, right? And that little skinny end is just up off the surface so that when I pull, spin, right? And pull back, it makes a petal shape. And then you just repeat that as many times as necessary, right? And we're gonna make little plum blossoms with this, but that's the basics of how you get a little petal, right? And then you can play around with how far off the surface the tip, like the skinny end of the petal tip is off the tip of, top of the nail to get cut, more cupped or flatter petals and all sorts of stuff. And you can do a lot of varieties with the different petal tips that are out there, whether they're curved or flat, right? So we're gonna go ahead and do some plum blossoms. So I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of buttercream in the middle of the nail. I'm going to grab, put it over on the other side, apologies, my bag with my 101 tip, and I'm gonna make kind of a center in my little plum blossom. So I'm just gonna start, right? Ooh. I got my buttercream really nice and loose beforehand and just spin a little flat disc, right? So it's a little base that we're piping these petals on. Plum blossoms kind of have a little bit of a reddish center to them. So I found that piping the petals then on top of this gave us that little bit of pop of red, right? At the center of each one. And so I'm just gonna leave a little space so that a little bit of that red will show through and I'm not worried about whether or not I'm picking it up in the petals or on the back. Oh, sorry, Tom's telling me I'm getting off track. Right. And so you can see from the side, we have nice, pretty little cupped petals. We have a little bit of that kind of orangey red peeking through. And will you hand me that other, the orange bag underneath? Thank you. Then we can do some cute little stamens. So I have this kind of orange color. I'm just going to go in, pipe and pull, right? Some cute little stamens. And this gives us a nice little look of plum blossoms without them being too complicated, right? And it gives us a nice little variety. So we have that kind of little bit of that orangey red peeking through. And we have the cute little uh, third color for the stamens. And that gives us lovely little plum blossoms that then we can put on our cupcakes. So I'm gonna go ahead. I've got some of these that I pre-piped and are in the refrigerator. So right now my buttercream is lovely, soft and loose and coming out gorgeously, which is great, but it makes them hard to handle. So usually take this, put it on a tray, Put them in the fridge 10 to 15 minutes if you want them to set up really quickly pop them in the freezer right i'm going to go ahead and pipe a little on one of my cupcakes so i'm going to take my brown and this is great actually if you're not so good with lines yet you're still working on your control and getting things smooth i'm going to do what i normally wouldn't do which is pipe directly on the surface so i'm just looking right to get a nice wiggly jiggly, uneven kind of shape going, right? Doesn't look like much, but plum trees have kind of knotted, kind of gnarly little branches. So if you're not so great at piping your lines yet, they're a nice one to do because imperfect lines are actually perfect for their branches. So that gives us a nice little something to start putting some blossoms on. I'm just gonna go ahead and do another one. Right? And it doesn't have to be anything specific. Just make sure it has at least one branch coming off, if not more than one. Right? And I'm gonna use 
my other bags just to kind of put the hint of some things going on. So if you can see in my sample, I have some little buds up top and also a little half flower. So I'm gonna work on doing those directly on the cupcakes. So for my buds, I'm just gonna take it and just pipe two little lines right there. And I'm going to switch my 59 for a spare number five on my pink. And I'm just gonna pipe two little teardrops on top of that little orange red color that I've got going on. And that just gives me that kind of little hint of a bud with a little bit of the darker color right down at the bottom. I can switch it back to my 59. And I'm gonna start putting on a little half flower. Sorry, a little sample got out of the way, right? So I'm just gonna use the same technique that I did on my flower nail and pipe let's say two or three petals right at the base of one of those little junctures and then I'm going to give it just right a little bit of that darker red and then what you can do is just pull a few little stamens right and that'll support the petals that I'm going to pipe going up and kind of flapping over so I'm just going to hold it same orientation right and pull right two more petals kind of resting on top of those stamens and then that gives me the look of a little like half open blossom that's on its side and then if my lovely assistant tom will grab my prepared flowers out of the refrigerator i'm going to go ahead and put one right there Awesome. Thank you. So we got the studio nice and warm today. So things wouldn't freeze up on me and give me problems. But then I realized that my pipe decorations were going to warm up too quickly because these flowers are really delicate and pretty. Oh, and I'm going to try and not knock the phone. So I'm just going to put it right in there. Right. And since these are nice and firm, I can just plop it right onto its waiting spot. Right. And that for me finished. If you want to, you can add a few little dots of green or some leaves, but they look pretty as is, right? So if you want just a little hint of green, sometimes a darker color, a leaf or two, it gives us that nice idea of spring and plum blossoms are good for any spring occasion, especially Lunar New Year. They're a nice little symbol of prosperity. People like the pink and red ones just because they're kind of symbols of good fortune. So it's a really pretty cupcake. So I'm going to go ahead and keep icing. I'll decorate a few more cupcakes. And if you want to turn the chat log back on, Tom, and we'll answer questions if anyone has any. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like more about the cake decorating materials and equipment we use, or just some inspirational videos about cake decorating itself, you can follow us on Insta or YouTube at Cake Decorating School. If you'd like to know more about yearly membership and what it entails, you can go to www.cakedecoratingschool.com for more information. And if you're interested in these products, you can check the links in the description.